from Nashville, Tennessee. This is the day the Lord has made. Join us for the next 30 minutes as we share the gospel ministry of Dale and Jerry Robbins. you for helping us to keep making these video presentations. Make your donation online at victorious.org forward slash donate. Once again, that's victorious.org forward slash donate. May God richly bless you.
Some years ago, I was asked to reflect on what I thought was the greatest need for ministry in today's church. While many issues came to mind, I was reminded of something I had read about the legendary football coach, Vince Lombardi. In July of 1959, members of the Green Bay Packers gathered for their, their first day of training camp with their newly hired coach. The previous season had ended with utter discouragement, finishing with only one win, 10 losses and one tie, the worst record in Packer history. In the offseason, they had all pondered the brutal losses and were now ready to start working on needed improvements. However, their new coach, Vince Lombardi, had an unexpected approach. Holding up a pig skin and addressing the players for their first practice, he started out by saying, gentlemen, this is a football. As he opened the playbook to page one and began teaching the basics of the game, the 38 professional players all looked at each other, some snickering at the rudimentary lessons that most had learned back in grade school. But this was Lombardi's tradition and method to take nothing for granted and start every season from scratch with the basic fundamentals and build from there. And his methods proved to be quite successful. Lombardi led the Packers to five NFL championships in seven years and to this day is considered one of the best football coaches in the professional uh, league uh, in history. This is so similar to the need of the church today. People often have so many complicated spiritual problems. Pastors are hard pressed to minister effectively or find ways to help. But what I found in my years as a pastor is the solutions to many spiritual issues often require going back to the fundamentals of the faith to assure that people have a good understanding of what it means to be born again and how to develop a consistent growing relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Some might think this contradicts scripture where it says to uh, let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again. Uh, let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And, and so, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. Uh, this was uh, cited by the writer of Hebrews, which we think was Paul, in chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. However, uh, the writer here isn't against teaching the basic principles if they are needed. He said nothing about that, but it's simply a matter of encouraging believers who have been saved for a time so that they won't stay stuck in that place. His point was followers of Christ need to move on to grow up and mature and not get bogged down in a cycle of restarting over and over. Uh, to illustrate what I'm saying, years ago I remember teens uh, in our church who would sometimes come to the altar in every service to get saved again, <laughs> maybe for the eighth or ninth time. This usually meant that they had committed sin in some fashion and were worried that they had lost their salvation. While I was glad that they felt conviction and remorse for their sins, it took time to reinforce a basic understanding that if they already had received Christ as their Savior, subsequent uh, acts of sin in themselves didn't unsave them, nor did they need to get resaved at every altar call. They simply needed to do what the Word says, to confess their sin, as it says in 1 John, and then keep striving forward, growing with the Lord, and avoid repeating the same sins and mistakes again. As John said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9. This was in contrast to the years I served as Bible professor in three separate Christian colleges. The subjects I taught were advanced level courses. 
designed for students who supposedly had already mastered an understanding of basic things. But even then, despite expecting everyone to have a grip on such rudimentary fundamentals, there were always some who still needed the Lombardi approach to start over with the basics again, or as many times as necessary. Not, not to keep them in that place to recycle over and over, but to get everybody on the same page so that we all could move forward and continue growing in God. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian or whether you've even advanced on to serving in the ministry. No one ever gets beyond a need for the fundamentals. It's the same for any field in life, whether you're a football player, a soldier, a plumber, or a Wall Street stock trader. The fundamentals are your foundation and what your further knowledge <clears throat> and experience is built, the basis for everything else. So what happens when someone comes along without an apparent understanding or experience with the basics, in that they keep making the same mistakes over and over? It becomes necessary to go back to the fundamentals, get a strong grip on those, not to stay in those places, not to stay in that fundamental place, but so they can actually grow and move on to greater things based on a good foundation. <clears throat> One of the places where this kind of thing shows up in a big way is marriage. I know of a guy some years ago who was in the process of his third divorce and getting ready to marry his fourth wife. <laughs> he already knew that something wasn't right to go through this many marriages but he was of the opinion that he had simply picked the wrong women. <laughs> I said, you know, either your picker is broke or else something real important is missing. What's that, he said. Your understanding of marriage, I replied. You may not have considered this before, but you just might have something to do with why your marriages haven't turned out well. And I'd suggest that before you make another mistake, you need to stop this merry-go-round or marriage-go-round and acquire a solid understanding and foundation about marriage before anybody else gets hurt. Why are there so many problems like this? Because most marriages in America are dysfunctional or broken, which will be the same cycle that will be repeated by their children on and on. It's the only thing they know from which they've seen and grown up with and when things don't work out with their marriage or their spouse, they simply dump them and move on to another. To conduct discipleship classes on the basics of marriage may seem too elementary for some people, but that's precisely what's needed. Of course, the objective is not to stay in an elementary place of understanding, but to grow and mature in one's relationship with each other. But that can't happen without a firm foundation, a solid foundation, on the list of fundamentals that we need to understand. Now I've come across the same kind of issue with people who profess to be Christians, but have in fact never actually been born again. That's a pretty big problem because without Jesus in the indwelling of his presence and power, you're not going to be able to live for him as a Christian. I've even encountered times where people have offered to serve in some capacity in the church, yet lacked this basic experience with God. One time I remember asking for volunteers to help answer phones during our TV ministry that we had years ago to counsel and pray with those seeking to receive Christ as their Savior, and yet I dis discovered that some volunteers were themselves not sure whether they were born again or what even that meant. It's far too easy for persons to check off yes boxes on a form without really knowing what it's talking about. Unfortunately, this kind of thing is a symptom of oversimplified evangelism that involves little else than repeating the sinner's prayer after a preacher. Uh, it is true that when one sincerely prays such simple words of surrender and repentance from their heart to the Lord, he will forgive us of sin and come into our heart. I teach that and have prayed with thousands to receive Jesus in the same way as I do here 
oftentimes, but it must come from a person's own heart and will and be based upon the foundation, the solid foundations of Scripture. There's a lot of people who do the same thing and identify themselves with Christianity, though they don't really understand what it means to be a follower of Christ. Many falsely think it's just a matter of being religious or going to church or preferring Christianity over other religions. I once thought it was something like that. When I was asked long ago about what religion I was, I was pretty sure I wasn't a Muslim or Buddhist. And since I had gone to a Christian church as a child, I figured that's what I must be. I was, but I was obviously mistaken. To favor Christianity or to have affection toward Christian traditions or philosophies is good and wonderful and a fine thing, but is not the same thing as being a Christian. Christianity is not simply a philosophy, history, religion, nor is it merely a matter of performing religious acts or joining a particular church. Christianity, rather, is a spiritual experience based upon a faith relationship between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, verses 3 through 7. This new birth that Jesus described to Nicodemus is the beginning of one's Christian life that brings salvation, uh, a state of redemption that comes as a gift of God by faith, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It occurs at the instant we effectively believe on Jesus Christ and confess Him as our Savior and Lord. As the Bible says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the confession, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10:10. 10, 10. Jesus also described the new birth as a conversion to infancy, explaining that the new spiritual life begins like the fresh innocence of a newborn child, with a need to learn and begin to grow in new spiritual things. He said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, verse 3. The new birth, also referred to by theologians as regeneration, occurs as a result of what we often call saving faith, which means to believe in Christ, in what his life, death, and resurrection did for us, and uh, turning away from a lifestyle of sin, which is repentance, and trusting Him to forgive us, to save us from the otherwise inevitable consequences of sin, as it describes in Romans 6 and verse 23. We openly confess Jesus as our Savior and Lord, and we confess and we commit ourselves to follow Him, His life, teachings, and example. As a result of this process, of this expression of faith, Jesus Christ comes within us, bringing an inner peace of His presence and an assurance of eternal life. The new birth is a universal, essential, spiritual experience for all followers of Christ, without which it's not possible to be a Christian. As the Apostle Paul said, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, Romans 8 and verse 9. The birth of God's Spirit brings His life and presence into our spirit, and we are reborn, transformed, changed by His new spiritual nature that has come to dwell inside of us. The Apostle Paul described the effects of the new birth like this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. New life is the hallmark of the born-again Christian. When Jesus comes in, old things go out. Old things pass away. Our sins are washed and cleansed by, the Christ's, by Christ's atoning blood, and our former life becomes old history. Literally, all things become new to us. Like a newborn baby, we're reborn with a new nature and desires, along with a hunger for God's Word that intensifies our appetite to obey and please the Lord. One of the first acts of obedience 
should become uh, be, should be to become baptized in water which is a symbolic expression of repentance and regeneration that is dying to the old sinful life and raising up in the new life of Christ as the word says and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Acts 10 and verse 48 transformation is also the greatest evidence of being truly a follower of Christ as we noted God's Spirit is birthed in our heart, and when His presence comes within, we become different people. Our thinking becomes new and different along with our instincts, actions, and desires. We inherit Christ's nature, beginning with His love and compassion for people, and, and especially our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. As John said, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. 1 John 3 and verse 14. And as we continue to grow in him and allow ourselves to become led and guided by his new spirit that dwells in us, his characteristics will continue to bloom in our life in the form of what scripture calls fruit. As the apostle Paul described, the fruit of the spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 23 through uh, 22-23, this doesn't mean that the processes and timing will always be the same for every believer. Newness and change are indeed common denominators for all Christians. When we make a deliberate decision to turn away from sin and follow Jesus will experience a growing continuing desire to please the Lord and follow his ways as shown through his word however we each will respond to our new faith in individual ways unique to our own personality and according to the Lord's separate plan for our life and what if there is no immediate change well don't get in a hurry. The spiritual birth is immediate, but the transformation of our desires and behavior will be progressive as we continue to grow and submit ourselves to the Lord. Fruit is something that tames, takes time to produce. We don't expect apples, pears, grapes, or other tasty fruits to suddenly appear overnight. Other than the obvious profession of faith that a new Christian makes known by openly confessing Christ as their Savior, in Matthew 10, 32 through 33, you ought to read that verse, and being baptized in water, as it tells us in Acts 2, 38, which is a, a command of the Lord, it might take a bit of time for friends or family to notice other substantial differences in the way we live and behave. The most noticeable immediate change will be uh, to be a new believer if we have, have genuinely decided to turn away from sin, to believe in and follow Jesus. And the Spirit will begin to produce an awareness of His presence in our heart, an inner knowing, or a, a sense of assurance to us that salvation has occurred. We will know before anybody else what's happened in our life and we may not be able to describe it or or explain it to anyone else but we know there is a knowing in our knower as the Bible says the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God or have become the children of God Romans 8 and verse 16 and so my friends today there you have it we've we must go back to the fundamentals and have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ before we go on to anything else. And this has been a stumbling block for many people who have tried to build uh, upon a life without Christ and it doesn't work that way any more than trying to play football without a basic understanding of the fundamentals as Vince Lombardi put it. Right now, today, you may be thinking about these very things and say, I've, I've experienced the same thing. I've been going through the same thing. Or I've, I've tried to move on in uh, uh, more advanced things, and yet somehow I've flubbed up the basic 
fundamentals and I need to get started fresh and to start over not to stay in that place but so that I can grow on a firm foundation and go on with God if that's you today this would be a good time on this very special Sunday morning to receive Jesus to put your faith in him and even if you're not sure whether you're saved or not you can be sure and make that confirmation known uh, with him today that you have made him your Savior and Lord you have confessed your sins you've asked him to come into your heart and the Bible tells us that he will not refuse you or turn you away if that's you today if that somehow describes where you are I want you to pray with me today father I thank you for my brother my sister out there those who are watching and Lord if if we need a brand new start in our life let it be today so that we know beyond any shadow of a doubt where we stand with you that we have confessed our sins we have asked you to forgive us and to come into our heart and we know that you will and from from there and from this point on we know that we can move forward and begin growing in you taking shape in our life in the way that we we know that we should and can and I pray that today right now if a friend is watching if they want to repeat my prayer they can but most of importantly that they would they would say these words from their heart and mean that sincerely from their own heart in their own words just just say something like this Lord Jesus forgive me of my sins uh, forgive me for my wicked ways come into my heart today I put my faith in you I believe that you died for my sins on the cross and that you rose again from the dead so that I would have life that I could have eternal life and I could go to heaven one day and spend eternity with you thank you for forgiving me thank you for coming into my heart thank you for saving me if you say something like that sincerely from your own heart just not a re repetition of my words God will hear you he will save you and you have begun today with something brand new a new life in Jesus well we love you today Jerry and I are so honored to be able to come your way today and each Sunday right here and we hope that you'll come back and, and join with us again and send us your prayer requests that we can be a prayer for you we're praying throughout the week for many of you and we'd love to know how that we can uh, be in prayer for you in your life so until next week uh, we want you to come right back here we love you god bless you in jesus name thank you for being with us today for more information, please visit our website at victorious.org. Until next time, God bless you.